The intent of this video is to discuss the devastating effect World War II German autocannons adopted by the Luftwaffe interceptors had on bombers. The Germans discovered that in order to bring down a heavy bomber, it would take more firepower than their standard 7.92 mm machine guns. The answer was the MG-151 20mm autocannons firing a high explosive mine round. Mauser was a manufacturer of the MG-151 autocannons. German combat footage revealed it took around 20 to 25 hits to take down a heavy bomber, like the B-17 Flying Fortress. What made the mine round so effective was the way the projectile functioned. This is a side-by-side -side cutaway comparison of the Browning 50 caliber cartridge versus the German 20 millimeter high explosive mine round. The cannon projectile is much larger than the 50 caliber bullet. The fuse is threaded into the projectile's body. The projectile is hollow and contains 18 grams of a high explosive fill. The 20 millimeter mine round explosive fill is roughly one third the explosive fill of a World War II pineapple style hand grenade. The body of the 20 millimeter projectile was fabricated from a drawn steel. The mine's fuse was triggered by contact. The fuse's detonation train was about 1 over 10 thousandths of a second from bomber skin contact to detonation. This duration is enough time to allow the projectile to bore two-thirds of its length into the bomber's thin skin at detonation. Detonation will send steel splinters radiating outward. This image shows a splinter density of a 20 millimeter high explosive mine round just after detonation. The detonation and splinters would reduce the structural integrity of the airframe, diminish the bomber's aerodynamic performance, wound or kill bomber crew members, and destroy the plane's vital systems. The bomber's vitals include oxygen, control cables, oil fuel, and hydraulic systems. The bomber's bomb casings are 0.3 inches thick steel and should not be susceptible to the mine round splinters. The mine rounds were not armor piercing. They are designed for destruction of the thin gauge airframe structures. B-17 bomber skin gauges varied, but the fuselage was mostly fabricated from an 032 inch thick aluminum sheet. That's the thickness of a credit card. This chart outlines the skin gauge thicknesses of the B-17's bomber's fuselage unrolled. This image shows a 20 millimeter mine round German specification. The muzzle velocity equated to 785 meters per second, which equates to 2,575 feet per second, or Mach 2.3. This image shows the entry damage of a 20 millimeter high explosive mine round. Couple characteristics of the image to point out. The detonation produced a hole in the Spitfire's fuselage about the size of the fighter pilot's face. 20 millimeter projectile detonation powder burns are visible radiating outward from the detonation site. This image is a backside view of the Spitfire. The fuselage damage due to splinter exit impacts are clearly visible. It is these splinter fragment holes, the detonation charge, together with the entry hole that reduces the airframe structural integrity and its aerodynamic performance. Here is another Spitfire that caught three rounds of the 20 millimeter high explosive mine round on the left side. The right side shows the massive splinter damage to the airframe. This damage was caused by a Japanese Zero 20mm autocannon projectile. The airframe is a B-24 and the crew member in view is Luis Zemperini, the unbroken guy. This view shows the damage from inside the fuselage. Notice that the control cables do not appear to be damaged. This image shows a B-17 armored windscreen after a 20mm cannon strike. The laminated ballistic transparency appears to have stopped the splinters from reaching the cockpit. The damage from this bomber is marked 20 millimeter, October 8, 1943. This image shows the thickness of a ballistic windscreen off of a German BF-109 for reference. This image shows a damaged P-47 and B-17 propeller. The 20 millimeter cannon projectile detonated midway through the P-47's propeller based on post-detonation damage forensics. To protect against low-velocity ground artillery flak and 20 millimeter cannon projectiles, crew members were issued flak vests and aprons. 
This June 1943 Air Force report reviewed 303 bomber crew member wounds. 39% of crew wounds were due to 20 millimeter cannon projectile fragments. Bomber crew flak vests and aprons were credited with reducing wounds by 60%. The Germans adopted the MG-151 20mm autocannon in many of their aircraft. The autocannon is shown in this image. This image shows the ground crew loading the 20mm linked cartridges. The BF-109 fired the MG-151 autocannon through its propeller hub. The Germans outfitted their Falkwolf F-190s with six MG-151 autocannons specifically to hunt heavy bombers. The dedicated bomber hunter was designated as the Falkwolf F-190 A-5 U-12. Gun pods were mounted to the wing underside to house the autocannons. This chart shows a distribution of destroyed bombers from both the 8th and 15th Army U.S. Air Forces. The x-axis is a month and year, the y-axis is the number of destroyed bombers per month. The area curves represent the destroyed bombers from either other, flak, or fighters. The other category includes bombers destroyed on a combat mission by mid-air collisions, landing accidents, and such. More bombers were destroyed by German fighters up to May 1944. After May 1944, more bombers were destroyed by ground artillery flak than fighters. This chart illustrates the causes of bomber damage of the 8th Army Air Forces flying over Nazi-occupied Europe. The data was extracted from January to May 1944 in this time period. The data shows that ground artillery flak accounted for 84% of bombers damaged and 20 millimeter cannon fire accounted for 4.5% of bombers damaged. Notice that air-to-air -air rockets, 30 millimeter cannon fire, and aerial bombs were not a significant source of bomber damage. The chart is valid for returning bombers, so we need to be careful in drawing conclusions as the data is survivor biased. Let's take a look at some German Luftwaffe gun camera footage. The Germans employed gun cameras to record air-to-air -air engagements. The footage shows U.S. bombers under attack from German fighters. The 20 millimeter high explosive mine rounds are detonating and tearing into the bomber's structure. Parts, panels, and components are flying off the bombers. This last clip is worth unpacking. If a bomber intended to surrender, the pilot would deploy the landing gear. This is a signal to the enemy interceptor that the bomber will be compliant. The fighter should escort the bomber to land on a German airfield. No return fire is coming from the tail gunner. His station appears to be disabled. The ball turret guns are pointed straight down. This signifies the ball turret crew member has or is egressing the turret. The landing gear is also down. Since the cannon projectiles are not intended for deep penetration, the engines appear to still be operating even after multiple direct hits. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.